Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to uh, multiply uh, binomials times trinomials and trinomials times trinomials. And basically, again, it's the same operation that we're going to be doing. We could use the box method or distributive property, kind of another thing of FOIL. But since we don't have binomials, FOIL is not really going to work, make as much sense. Um, but again, if you just think of the process of the uh, zero product property, it doesn't really matter how many terms A or B and C have. Whatever's outside the parentheses, I need to multiply it times every single term inside that parentheses. And that's what we need to go ahead and make sure we follow here. So um, in this case, basically, I'm going to do it two different methods. I'm going to use the vertical method as well as the box method. And then you can kind of decide which method you like. So when using the vertical method, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply one term times every single term and then list those products. So I have x times x squared, which is x cubed, x times negative 2x, which is negative 2x squared, and x times negative 4, which is negative 4x. And then I'm going to add that to my next product. The only problem I have with uh, vertical method is if we have spacers, sometimes that gets confusing. So um, we just want to make sure you maybe leave enough room so you can kind of fit in those spaces. In this case, I don't, we're not going to have any of that case, but we'll have negative 1 times x squared, so that's negative 1x squared negative 1 times 2x, which is going to be a positive 2x. And then we have a negative 1 times negative 4, which is a positive 4. Now, again, remember we're adding. So again, what I was talking about, like that place value here, we don't have anything to add the 4 to. Well, we could always think of that as like a plus a 0. Okay? Um, and then here, I don't have anything to add to. So we can think of that as a plus 0 as well. I'm sorry, 0x cubed. So therefore, when adding vertically, I'm going to get x cubed. This is negative 2x squared plus a negative x squared, which is a negative 3x squared. Here I have negative 4 plus 2, so that's going to be a negative 2x. And then I have 0 plus 4, which is a positive 4. The other way to do this is to think of this as a length times width. And so therefore, that's going to produce a rectangle. So based on how many terms you have, what you do is if you have two terms, you create a side length of 2. And here, if you have three terms, you make kind of three little sections here. And basically, the idea is to get each and every term into its, same, its own row or column. So I have x cubed minus 4x. And then over here, I'll have x cubed minus 3x plus 5. And then basically, what we're doing is we're just finding the area of each little box, because that's what multiplying two um, terms is giving you, is an area, of an area of a rectangle. And you can just think, even though these look confusing, that's really all we're doing. So x cubed times x cubed is x to the, um, add the powers, x to the 6 x cubed times negative 3x is negative 3x to the fourth. x cubed times 5 is going to be 5x cubed. x cubed times negative 4x is going to be a negative 4x to the fourth. Negative 4x times negative 3x is a negative 3x squared. And negative 4x times 5 is going to be a negative 20x. Now what we notice is, oh, we do have some common terms, don't we? Yep, so we do only have one set of common terms. So if you imagine if we would have done the vertical method here, there's only would have been two numbers I would have been able to combine. I would have had to add all these different place values, which I think sometimes gets a little confusing. I like the box method because we can just find the terms that are common and then just write everything else out. So that's x to the 6, negative 7x to the 4th, um, plus 5x cubed, minus 3x squared, minus 20x. Okay. So now let's go and do the vertical method again, but we will do it. Um, we'll do it now with trinomials times trinomials. So again, we're going to multiply x squared times every single term. X squared times x squared is going to give me x to the fourth. X to x squared times negative three is going to be negative three x um, cubed. And x squared plus two is going to be a positive two x squared. Then we'll do the next row. So I have 2x times x squared, which is going to give me a 2x cubed. And I want to make sure that, again, you align them with their common term. These both have bases x and a power 3. I wouldn't want to put it over here because I couldn't add x cubed to x to the fourth. So you just want to align them. That's the nice thing about the vertical alignment. But it really helps well when they're kind of uniform, like these. You can see they all have the same powers. So it's going to be kind of an easy step by step. Whereas like this would not be very fun to do in the vertical method. So that's where we're going to use the, the box method. But you could e use it either way. Um, so 2x times negative 3x is going to be a negative 6x squared. And then 2x times 2 is going to be a positive 4x. And then last but not least, we need to do the last term. Again, times every single term. So 1 times x is going to be a positive x squared. Again, notice how I'm moving it in the line with the x squareds. 
1 times negative 3x is going to be a negative 3x, and then 1 times 2 is a positive 2. So again, you can place your little place values. So therefore, now you have three terms. And you don't need to put these little place values, but I think it's just kind of always helpful to kind of know what exactly you're adding. Because remember, when you're adding and you're adding like terms, the base and the power remain the same. You're just adding the coefficients. So if you're not seeing any terms there, you're not adding coefficients, it's kind of hard, for me at least, to kind of visualize. Really what you're doing here is adding 1 plus 0 plus 0, which is 1x to the fourth, or just x to the fourth. Negative 3 plus 2 plus 0, which is a negative x to the third. 2 plus negative 6, which is negative 4, plus a 1. So that's going to be a negative 3x squared. And then here you have 4x, or 0 plus 4x minus 3 is going to be plus x, and then plus 2. And there you go, there's your final answer. Last but not least, a trinomial times a trinomial. Again, now we have three terms, so I'm going to create my box. I'm going to have, I'm going to break it up into three rows and three columns. Again, put one product, one trinomial on one side, and put the other trinomial on the other side. Make sure you're giving each term its own row or column. Then all you do is multiply length times width for every single box. So x cubed times x to the fourth is x to the seventh. x cubed times negative 3x squared, remember to add the powers and multiply the coefficients. So that's going to be 3 negative 3x to the fifth. This will be x to the fourth. x to the fourth, now I'm multiplying this row times x to the fourth. So that's going to be 2x to the fifth. 2x times negative 3x squared, that's going to be a negative 6x cubed. 2x times x is going to be a 2x squared. Therefore, here I have 3x to the fourth. 3 times negative 3 is a negative 9x squared. And 3 times x, which is going to be a positive 3x. And now, rather than adding vertically, I'm just going to kind of look as the, along the diagonals and look for terms that are like terms. You can see I have a couple options of like terms. And therefore, when I write my answer, I'm just going to combine them together. So I'll have x to the seventh. And then 2x to the fifth minus 3x to the fifth, so that's going to be negative 3x to the fifth. Um, there I'm going to have 3x to the fourth and x to the fourth, so that's going to be a positive 4x to the fourth, negative 6x cubed, negative 7x squared, plus 3x. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you multiply binomials times trinomials and trinomials times trinomials. Thanks.